the city today. We're playing with cars and roads. We're going to show you how to do it so you can play too. Beep, beep, beep. The first thing that you need to make your own city is masking tape. Let's get building. You can make your roads to go up furniture so you can make a hill. We use crayons to draw lines down the tape like a road. I'm going to put roads inside the town square so you can go anywhere you want without having to go around it. After that, we're going to add some trees. We made the trunk with paper towel roll and we made the leaves with tissue paper. And then we added some buildings. We drew the buildings on some construction paper. I'm gonna put the post office right over where the school is. You can use blue construction paper to make a lake. I added a school because I thought it would be really cool to drive a school bus. I like this road through the forest. It's so pretty to drive through the trees. Beep, beep. so much traffic. This, this is, is our city. city! How to make a spaghetti game! We made a great game out of spaghetti and the colander. We're going to show you how to do it so you can play too. First you need a colander. A colander is a strainer that you use in the kitchen. Like when you're washing fruit or dumping cooked vegetables into it. The holes let the water run out. Next you need some dry spaghetti. Any kind of long pasta. It just can't be cooked. Then you need to put the dry spaghetti through the hole of the colander. And you have to push it through one hole to get it all the way to the other side. It can be whatever way you want. Go crazy! to make it so it goes all the way to the other side. If a piece breaks of the dry spaghetti, it's no problem. We're making a net of spaghetti inside the colander. When the net is ready, you can put in a ball, a very light ball, like a ping pong ball or a foam ball. The ball should be light enough to sit on top of the pasta. Gently drop your ball on top of the spaghetti net. Each person takes turns pulling a piece of pasta out. The goal of the game is to pull out the pasta and get the ball to the bottom. I'm picking this one because it's under the ball and it has better chances of making it fall. You were so close. I want to choose this one because it's holding the ball up. Yes! And, and that's, that's how you play Spaghetti Net! This is how you make magic milk. Isn't it cool? I'm going to show you how to do it so you can play too. First you want to pour some milk into a small dish. You don't need a lot of milk. The best thing to use is whole milk because it has the most fat in it. Then you add a few drops of food coloring. Use all the colors that you want to see swirl. This is red. This is blue. This is yellow, and this is green. You want to get the color all around so it looks cooler. Last, you add a tiny drop of liquid soap. You really don't want to add too much. Just dip it into the soap and let it drip into the milk. And this is where the magic happens. Abracadabra! The colors are swirling around like crazy. It's like liquid tie-dye. The science is that the soap is chasing the fat in the milk. And as it chases the fat, it swirls the colors. Important tip, do not stir the milk. If you mix it up, it stops working. Abracadabra, you've got magic milk.
make your own movement game. Hi, we made our own game. First, I'm gonna roll the action die. Hop like a frog. Uh, <laughs> wonder how many times I have to do that. Six. Six. The highest one, one, two, two three, four, five, six. Your turn. Run in place. One time. What? <laughs> yeah, okay. Your turn. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Uh, roll the action die. Da, da, da. Spin around. I love spinning around. <laughs> so let's see how many times I have to spin around. Spin around. <gasps> Four. Four. <laughs> okay, let's do it. One, two, three, four. Woo! <gasps> this is how you make a movement dice. You start with the box. Now this is a regular gift box. You can use a tissue box or any other type of square box that you can find. The next step is to decorate it. You can decorate them with actions like hop like a frog or spin around. You can use construction paper and make squares out of each side of the box. Like these, which we made earlier. I'm gonna put on this card, do the chicken dance, with a little drawing of a chicken on. You can do any actions you really want on these, but you should choose something silly if you want this to be really fun. I'm gonna put do a jumping jack on this card. Once you're done with all drawing your actions, you can put them on the box. This is the box, and I'm gonna tape them because gluing them might get too messy. You wanna tape one action on each side. If you don't wanna draw your actions like we did, you can always cut them out from a magazine or go onto the internet and print them out. Here are some of the silly actions we thought of. We thought of pretend you're an elephant. Fly like an airplane. Put your finger to your nose. Swirl around. Do jazz hands. Do a jumping jack. Do the chicken dance. Dance like a crazy person. Jump on one leg. Jump up and down. Swim in an ocean. Then you do the same thing all over again to make your number dice. It has numbers on each side from one to six. You're ready to play. You I got, got jazz, jazz hands. hands. I got jazz hands. <laughs> Five. Five times. Five times. <laughs> a rainbow rain cloud. You need shaving cream, food coloring, and water. First, you fill a clear vase with water. It helps if it's a vase and it's narrow, not a big bowl. Then you need to add shaving cream on top. When it makes that noise, shake it. Looks kind of mm, like a cloud, kind of. Make a big pile of shaving cream. The shaving cream will float on top. I think it's ready. Then you add some water to some small cups. Just a little bit, don't fill it up. Next, get your color ready. Just a little bit of water with food coloring in it. Then, pour your colored water into your cloud. Just pour a little bit. I'm doing purple. Try to put a color on each side, so then there's more explosion. I added blue. Now I wanna add some red. It's swirling. It takes a little while to soak through the shaving cream. Then the colors go into the water. It's going down really slow, like in slow motion. It's very pretty. And it looks like colorful rain coming out of a cloud. It's so cool. Whoa. And that's how to make a rainbow rain cloud. How to make a secret spy banana. Will you 
Pug. <laughs> I'm a spy. I'm a spy too. And here's a secret message. What a banana. It has a message. We love playing spies. We're going to show you how to set a secret spy message on a banana so you can play too. All you need is a banana and a toothpick. So first, we're going to start writing the message. So I'm going to write cold red. I want to make a pattern, and then on the other side, I'm going to write a secret message to my sister. Using the toothpick to scratch the skin of the banana, so then it makes lines in the banana skin. You can't really see it at first, but after a little while, it turns brown. That's why it's secret, because it starts out invisible. You can write words, or you can draw a picture. We made some earlier, and you can see they turn brown. I'm almost done. I'm almost done too. And that's how you make a secret spy banana. Calling Spy 42. Spy 31 is here. Okay, I'm here. What's going on? I found her. He's planning to go into space. Spy out. Spy out. We're playing spies! Ooh, look, a secret message. I wonder what it is. It's coming together. I see something appearing. Star! It's a star. Cool message. We're going to show you how to make a secret message so you can play Spy too. Watch this. Here's how to send a secret message on blank paper. Here it goes, Andrew. So first, we get a white crayon and we write a secret message on the paper. You can't really see it, but you have to know what you're writing. You can also just draw pictures. It's a little tricky to see what you're drawing sometimes. There you go. Once you're done with your message, you use the watercolor on top. The watercolor paint doesn't stick to the crayon, so you can see the crayon message. Look what happened to mine. You can use a dark color because it'll be easier to see. I'm using the color orange. Maybe I should send a map to important clues. Maybe I could send a secret meeting place. And that's how you make a secret spy message. How to make and open a dinosaur egg. It's time, it's time for the dinosaur egg to be hatched. Everybody, come on in. Hey, I'm hey, coming. Mr. T -Rex. I'm coming. Ooh, bubbly. Look at all oh. those bubbles. Oh, my. That's my son. <laughs> hey! He's my son. Hello, everyone. This is how you make dinosaur eggs. First, you need a big mixing bowl. Then you're gonna add a lot of baking soda. You're gonna add two cups of baking soda. And then you add a half a cup of sand. After you put the sand in, you mix it together. Then you're gonna add a little bit of water at a time. You can always use your hands instead of a spoon. It feels very squishy and a little cold. You want it to start feeling it could stick together so the eggs stay strong. I think we need to add the food dye now. The food color is going to make our dinosaur eggs blue. You can use whatever color you want. I added about maybe six drops. And then you mix. It's okay if the food dye gets on your hands because when you wash your hands, it'll come right off. Oh, it feels really squishy. You want to keep mixing, kind of put some strength into it and kind of just keep squishing it together and like throwing it apart. I think we're ready for our dinosaurs. Yep. 
you want to take a little tiny dino and shape the sand around the dino. You want to try to cover the dino as much as you can so none of it shows. If it falls apart, it's okay. Just do it again. You want to try to mold the sand and the baking soda around the dino so you can't see the dino and so it mostly looks like an egg. It's kind of like a hot potato but just very sticky. You want to put the dino egg on a plate or a pan or something that's flat so it can dry overnight. These are some eggs we made earlier so they're already dry. And once they're dry, you're ready to find your baby dino. I'm using a fork. You can also use a toothpick too. I see a little bit of the dino. All I see is the tail and the legs. And a little bit of the nose. I'm a dino coming out of my egg. Roar, I'm coming out. I think I have a stegosaurus. There's one more fun way you can open your egg. This is vinegar and you can spray this on your egg. Once you spray it, you can see that it's bubbling. Whoa, look at those bubbles. I see the bubbles going everywhere. The egg starts to dissolve. It gets a little wet so you can open it up. Ooh, it smells a little stinky. I wonder if dinosaurs smell stinky like that. I'm starting to see my dino. It's super easy because when the sand becomes wet, it's easy to pick off. Ooh, I just broke it open. Now I can see the tail. I found a little green guy. Roar. Roar! That's so cool. And that's how you hatch dino eggs. We're having a dance party. Yeah! We're gonna show you how to do it so you can play too. This is how you make everything you need for your dance party. First, you have to take two straws and try to pinch one to try to fit it in the other one that has a full hole. Then you push it in to make sure that it's nice and tight inside. Then you can bend and do the same thing to the other side. I want to use this color to make a bracelet. You can make a pattern, or you can just do the same color. This is how you make a straw crown. First, you're going to need a long piece of tape. Put it the sticky side up. Then you're going to need some straws. You want to cut the straws so they're all different heights. I'm using this one and putting it right here. Now I'm doing one that's shorter. I'm going to make this one go up high so I don't need to cut it. You want to line up the bottom of the straw and the bottom of the tape. When you have all your straws down, you put down another piece of tape to hold them in place. And then voila, you have yourself a crown. Once you have all your straw decorations, you can dance. How to make marbleized paper. We made this cool paper. Isn't it beautiful? We're gonna show you how to make one so you can play too. First, you need a baking tray, and then you need some shaving cream. Just get regular shaving cream that's white. Make sure it doesn't have any aloe vera and no gel cream. Fill the tray with the shaving cream. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Once the tray is filled with shaving cream, you have to smooth out the top. You can use your hands or a ruler or even a mixing spoon. You really want the top very smooth so that when you press down your card, it's not bumpy or anything or there's clumps on it. Then you're gonna add your food coloring. I've decided that I'm going to use red first. Think 
about colors that you'd like to see together. And then drop the food coloring close together. Then you use a toothpick to marble the top. Marble is a sort of funny word because it doesn't have anything to do with little balls of glass. When you marble something in art, it means you gently mix a dark color into a light color. You gently use a toothpick to mix the color in. Once the colors are mixed, you're ready to put on your paper. Don't use regular paper because it will get too wet with the shaving cream. Use a note card or any other heavy paper. Press it right on top of the shaving cream right on the colorful spot you want. When you're pressing it in, you're putting the ink on the card. Don't press it to the bottom, just press it lightly on top of the shaving cream. Then peel it gently out. And then scrape the shaving cream off of the card. Whoa! What's left behind is the beautiful pattern of marbled food coloring. This is so cool. Finally, when you're done, it's gonna look like this. And that's how you make marbleized paper.